but I just wanted to tell you that I suffer from really bad anxiety, especially uh, with generational trauma and PTSD around white people. Well guys, it happened again. We are once again looking at a video where somebody thinks that they should be exempt from being pulled over for a reason that is uh, quite silly. Now I say we are once again looking at a video like this because my most viewed video ever is of a woman who gets pulled over and tells the cop that she should not be pulled over because she's a woman. And today we're about to watch a person get pulled over for drunk driving and then tell the cop that they should not be pulled over and they should not have to do these field sobriety tests because they have social anxiety, amongst many other things. Now, I really enjoy making these body cam videos because it's very interesting to see how some people react when they're caught doing something they shouldn't. However, the comment sections on these videos always turn into all-out wars, and I feel like in this video especially, it's going to be a rough one. So, uh, if we could maybe avoid that, that would be awesome. Is that going to happen? Um, unlikely, but I figured it was worth asking, so I uh, thought I would just throw that in there. But, Let's not waste any more time. Let's begin. Please subscribe. Real quick, one more thing before we begin. The audio in this video is super desynced for some reason. I tried to fix it to the best of my ability, but it desyncs in multiple spots, so I couldn't just fix it once. So it's not going to be perfect. So uh, sorry about that. What's going on? Nothing. Why are you driving in the wrong way of traffic? No, I just got changed around. I just moved here like two months ago. Okay. I just got changed around. Like okay. Do you understand what's going on though? Yes. You're going in oncoming yes. traffic. I know, and I just decided that it was better just to turn around really fast. Okay. But I'm sorry. I was driving home from a dinner like two weeks ago and somebody did this to me. I was driving down a divided highway and I guess the guy thought there was like two sets of two-way streets and I was in the left lane and he pulled straight into me when I was like 30 feet away from him. So we almost had a head-on collision. I had to slam on my brakes. I was laying on my horn and the guy was just looking at me like I was crazy. And the guy just parked it right there. He didn't back up. He wasn't looking around for a sign. He just sat there in the middle of the street, I guess thinking I was crazy. So I went around him and he continued down the road going the wrong direction. Driving test in America should probably be a bit more difficult. Do you live here or are you just trying to- I just moved here. No, but do you live here in like this apartment complex? Oh no, okay. I didn't, but- So you were just like, hey, I'm gonna, exactly. I'm gonna turn around by coming in here. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, this is your car? Yes. I will get your insurance well, too. Well, not my car, but it's my mom's. Cause my car got kind of up. I'm so sorry. What happened to your car? It's with my dad, like... No, but you said it got messed up. Yeah, like, it has a bad oil change and stuff, so. Okay. Is it insured? Yes, it Okay, is. can I just have you step out? We'll go look it up on my computer and I'll get you out of here. All right, so it's time to get into our first controversial take of this video, and there's gonna be a lot of them, so uh, buckle up. On the original upload where I found this video, all of the comments are talking about how professional this cop is, how nice he is, and um, he's not, okay? He's not professional, he's not nice. People who haven't dealt with the police don't understand what this guy is doing. Now, some of you may already know this, but before I dropped out of college to be a YouTuber, I was going to be a criminal defense lawyer, and you learn a lot about this stuff and how the police work. Good police officers, their intentions are always hidden. All of these questions, this conversation, he's not really interested in what this person has to say. It's just trying to catch you off guard. Notice how he asked what happened to your car, and then about two or three words into this person's response, he cuts them off and says, no, 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 what happened to it? Like he somehow wasn't getting the answer. That's on purpose. If this cop was talking to a person he didn't have pulled over, he would not have interrupted there because that's how a conversation works. You give context. You're not expected to give the most bare bones answer 24 seven. He also throws in extra questions that aren't really important right now. Like is your car that you're not driving right now insured? You can drive someone else's car as long as you have permission with their insurance. Saying stuff like just step back to my car real quick. We'll get you right out of here. I promise you at this moment, this cop has already decided to arrest this person. Now he just has to find cause. But because this cop thinks this individual is drunk, he's using these strategies to try and fluster them. Now look, I think this person probably is drunk. It's going to get more and more obvious as the video progresses. I'm not defending either party here, but please don't leave comments about how professional this guy is because yeah, he's professional in the sense that he knows how to get the outcome he wants, but he's not being friendly here. Okay. Well, can I just look for the insurance because that's what you asked for first? Sure. 
Sorry, I just have like really bad social anxiety and stuff. I get you. So, just a heads up, I don't want to be out here any longer than you do. We walk back to my car, I look it up on the computer, and I get you out of here. Okay. Okay? Go ahead and step out for Wait, me. What are you looking for? All right, so there's a lot going on here. I'm going to try not to talk the entire video, but like I said, these videos interest me, so it's probably going to happen anyways. So here we see our first social anxiety card thrown into the mix, which is an interesting choice. I could understand being nervous when you're talking to a cop, but I don't know if social anxiety would really affect your ability to find your insurance. Now, uh, being impaired from being intoxicated mixed with social anxiety, okay, maybe I could understand not being able to find your insurance then. Pro tip, just keep it on your phone. But again, none of this actually matters because he's not really trying to run any of this stuff. With a driver's license and a license plate, he's going to get all the information he needs. He just wants this person out of the car to do field sobriety tests so he can then make an arrest. That's it. Your insurance registration, I'm going to check your driver's license status, I'm going to do all that. Just go ahead and step out for me, ma'am. Okay. But do you have any weapons on you or anything I need to know about? No, but that's the thing. It's like, I don't want to step out whenever you're asking for stuff. Okay, well we're past that. Just go ahead and step out. I'll walk you back to my patrol car and then I'll talk to you back there. Okay. Sorry, just like as an indigenous person. Uh... Right back here, please. Miss Perry? Am I... Well, I'm non-binary, so... Okay. What do you go by? It's Kai. How can I refer to you tonight? Kai? Kai. Okay. All right. Okay. So when you start talking about the LGBTQ community on the internet, everybody is going to have to get a word in. Um, so I'm really, really excited to see the comment section of this video, but everybody should be allowed to express themselves the way they want and live their lives the way they want. It doesn't affect you. You shouldn't have a problem with it. Okay. That's my piece. A person identifying in a way they feel fit and comfortable should not be your issue. And there's really not a whole lot of exceptions to that. However, using a particular identification as a reason to be driving drunk? That's a wild one. That's one I don't think I've ever actually heard before, and it's something we're gonna hear a little bit later alongside many, many other insane excuses. It's about to get wild, people. Hey, I'm smelling alcohol. I know. How much have you consumed tonight? Like, probably three drinks. Three drinks? What? What is this strategy? I feel like if you're gonna drive drunk, you need to go down one of two routes. One, if you get pulled over, you're gonna be honest with the cop, you're gonna try to win some brownie points, hopefully he'll go easy on you. Or two, you deny everything and you just hope you blow under the legal limit. Why even deny for a second that he might smell alcohol if you're just gonna follow it up with, yeah, I've had three drinks tonight, what about it? I don't picture this working, but hey, I guess we'll see. Okay, judging by driving wrong way on that street. I know, that's the other thing that Well, I hang on, about. don't cut me off. Judging by how you're driving, the smell, I need to run you through some tests right now. Okay, that's why I have you out of the car. Once well, that's I the thing that I asked about before. I said, okay, so you're just giving me for my registration. And mm -hmm. you said yes. Yep. And now you're running me for other stuff. Yeah, I'm going to run you through some tests to make sure you're safe to drive. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, he was never going to run any of this stuff. This was all about the tests, which don't get me wrong. This person should be arrested. They're clearly drunk. Drunk driving is a crime that I think is often overlooked. It's a terrible, selfish thing to do. So it's not like I'm opposed to him trying to get this person out of their car. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of people tend to think that if you're just cooperative with the cop, you get out of your car, do what they say, you'll get to go. Yeah, no, if a cop is asking you to step out of your vehicle, you're probably not not going back in it for a while. You said you had three drinks? What kind of drinks would those be? Rum and a cider. Okay. Are we talking like a mixed drink? Are we talking a shot? What are we talking about? Well, rum is going to be a mixed drink. Cider is just a cider. Okay. Perfect. Stand facing me, please. But I just want you to know that I also have very bad social anxiety. You and me both. Okay. I find it very interesting that the immediate response to the cop saying I have social anxiety too is a head shake. Now obviously we have no way to tell if he's joking or not, but the idea that this person wants their claims of social anxiety immediately taken seriously, but they're not taking anybody else's claim seriously, is kind of telling. Stand with your feet together, toes touching, arms by your side, just like I am. Hands outside of your pockets, please. I'm gonna have you take those glasses off, you can fold them up, put them in one of your pockets. Perfect. I'm gonna be going back and forth with my finger. I don't want you to move your head throughout this test, I just want you to focus on the tip of my finger, only moving your eyes. You obviously have glasses, so there's no contacts in your eyes right now, correct? Any recent head trauma, 
traumatic brain injuries, anything I need to know about? Uh, mental, yes. <laughs> wow, we are really harping on this, huh? It's unfortunate because people see videos like this and it makes them not take stuff like this seriously. It makes a lot of people think that people say stuff like this for no other reason but to make excuses. When a lot of people really struggle with stuff like this, like to keep digging yourself in this hole, to act like you're not going to be able to pass these field sobriety tests because you have mental illness. You're not going to pass them anyway because field sobriety tests are meant for you to fail, but like, come on, at least go out noble. Any recent head trauma though? You haven't hit your head in like the last month or so? You have? Okay. What'd the doc say? That I had a little concussion. Okay, so concussions heal. Any long-lasting effects? Sure. I don't know. All right, so up to this point, I think you could maybe write this off as a person who really just doesn't know how to talk to people. And you could say maybe it all just sounds like excuses, but maybe they're really being genuine. Yeah, no, not anymore. The cop repeated the question about head injury three times, and it wasn't until they realized the cop was not going to take the social anxiety thing as an excuse for them to remember that they had a concussion. Come on, this is pretty sad, and uh, it's only going to get worse. I'm asking you. I know. Is there anything that would prevent you from driving that no. car? Okay. Stand with your arms by your side, please. I want you to focus on the tip of my finger, okay? Focus on my finger, please. I am. You're just like trying to intimidate me. I don't know how I'm trying to do that. This is the test. I need you to take your glasses off, okay? Focus on my finger. Focus on my finger, please. I am, but you're... This is just how the test goes. I know, but you're exaggerating it more than it needs to be right now. This is just the test, okay? I know. When you stop and look at me, I have to redo a certain portion of the test. Okay. So just focus on my finger. Well, as you know, as an indigenous person, and there's a bunch of shit going around, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just for me to be on my toes. All right, let's be real here for a moment. Living in America, having a healthy distrust of the police, probably a good idea. If you don't like me saying that, I don't really care. However, trying to use that here, trying to pull that card after you've been caught drinking and driving, we're really just throwing stuff at the wall to see if it sticks, huh? I mean, again, this really downplays the situations when people really do have to deal with stuff like this. I mean, this is not a routine traffic stop where your tail light is out or something and a cop is trying to escalate the situation. You were caught drinking and driving going down the wrong side of the road and now you're going through the standard procedure for when you're caught doing something like that is the procedure flawed yeah but you're still not following the directions face your vehicle can you remember that i told you that i'm non-binary yeah i'll try my hardest okay it's not something that i do with every day so i'll, I'll have the, uh, the mistake of the habit right Please. so i'll refer to you as kai right yes perfect i want you to to imagine about a four inch wide line, okay? That four inch wide line is just gonna go from your right foot completely straight to the back of your car. Mm -hmm. Can you picture that four inch wide line? Can you picture it? Just a straight four inch wide line. Yes. Perfect. Hang on. Do you want me? <laughs> I'm gonna go over some instructions before you do anything, okay? I need to know if you have any injuries or anything that would prevent you from doing a standard walk or a turn tonight mental health. My goodness. Okay, are we four for four tonight? Are we dining at Wendy's? I mean, come on, you've got to know this is not working. If you have a mental illness severe enough that would prevent you from walking in a straight line, you should not be driving. I mean, I'm starting to think the three drink statement might have been a fib because I don't know how you would ever think this would even work. Um, Any physical injuries? Mentally, yeah. Are we serious? Okay, you have zero questions? No, but I just want to tell you that I suffer from really bad anxiety, especially uh, with generational trauma and PTSD around white people and cops. Like Wow, okay, really pulling out all the stops here. So we've got anxiety, generational trauma, and PTSD involving white people. What's the plan here? Just keep throwing out words until the cop lets you go? I mean, surely nobody thinks that would actually work, right? I mean, if you truly have generational trauma involving police officers, I would recommend not driving drunk. That would be my first suggestion. And then PTSD involving white people? Really? Nothing specific? Just, just white people in general? I'm gonna give this cop a little bit more credit than I was giving him earlier. Putting up with all of this with a straight face is pretty impressive, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think many people would have this kind of patience, and it's good that he does. This next test, I'm gonna ask you to lift the leg of your choice off the ground. It's gonna be about six inches off the ground, it's gonna be parallel with the ground. 
You keep your arms by your side. You're going to focus on the tip of your toe, counting in 1,000s. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Your foot and leg will be straight the entire time. Parallel with the ground, leg completely straight. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? 1,001, 1,002. Hold on. Go back to the starting eight, position. Four. Go back to the starting five, position. Six. You didn't listen to what I said, did you? You didn't listen to what I said, man. I know. I said I'm when I instruct. Moving to you. Well, I said when I instruct you I to know, start. I know, and right now I just feel harassed. So. Okay. I said when I instruct you okay. to start. Can you just count now? You're gonna continue to I count am harassed. until I tell you to stop. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and begin. All right, so here is where I think we start to see a lot of the true colors showing through. I feel like a person who really had this much trauma involving police officers would not be willing to talk to one this way. I mean, it's very strange how quickly the demeanor has changed. I think they've realized that all of these excuses are not going to work. Well, maybe not because now it's harassment. So uh, I don't really know what's going on. So the rest of the video was just the arrests taking place and then the officer reading the rights over and over and over again because they keep asking for them to be repeated. But during this part, we see some of the best excuses yet so we're gonna jump around for a second here don't you're being Come a here. white man and breath I'm test to put people with problems or... no. do you now agree to be tested i'm just asking if it also implies that people applies to anyone and everyone that's arrested for driving under the influence. He said, read back the last two paragraphs because I am severely depressed. So those three are my favorite. We've got the classic, stop arresting me, you're being a white man. And then they genuinely ask with a straight face if the breathalyzer test applies to people with mental health problems and those who suffer from depression. I mean, you really can't make this stuff up, people. Well, guys, that was a doozy. These videos are always so funny to me because it's genuinely baffling to hear what some people think is actually gonna work to get them out of doing something like this. I mean, it really just goes to show that some people live in their own world. To think that this would work, it really makes you wonder what they've gotten away with in the past using these same excuses. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.